The next thing I'd like to show you is the predictive target curve. So once I've uh, taken a measurement and I've done some calibration, I might want to come back and uh, modify some of the EQ bands, but I'd like to see what they're going to do before I do it. So for example, uh, I might want to fix this area. As you can see when I click and drag, I get a selection range. Uh, it also tells me the octave band and the center frequency of this particular selection, which is not necessarily the exact area that I need to fix. So I'll click anywhere to deselect. The next thing I need to do is select a EQ band uh, that is not being used that I can use to fix this area. So if I hit the space bar, you can see I get a uh, filter selection up here in the top right corner, filter T1, which is being used. If I hit backspace, I go backwards one, and you'll see that there's one that's not being used, filter 15. Uh, I just happen to know that that was not being used. Now I could come down here and, and click on one of these small boxes, or I can just use the up and down keys to increase or decrease. And you can see there it starts to pop out. And the left and right to make the frequency higher or lower. And you can see that the uh, predictive curve starts to appear and I can see what it would do. If I make it really big, you can see how large that can become. Page up and down will increase or decrease the size of the bandwidth. And you can see that happening down here as well as in the predictive curve up here. So I just adjust it until it looks relatively flat. That looks pretty good. Um, at this point, uh, I would be done and I'd want to take another measurement just to make sure that what I did actually had the effect I wanted. Once I'm done making any adjustments that I'd like to hear, I can do one of two things. I can either start playing some music and listen to the changes. I can actually do that in real time while I'm making my adjustments. Or I can take another measurement. To take another measurement, I would click on Run Single Task and I would want to re-measure the after EQ. I simply hit OK and the measurement will begin. Once the measurement is complete, it will appear as a new dark bold line showing me the changes as measured. Another way that you can adjust settings is through the use of the classic UI. The classic UI gives us the same information but with more detail because it is not going to show us the measurements. You can see the EQ curve down here. If I switch to classic UI and I select the center channel, this is the same EQ that we saw but with more detail obviously we can see all the individual parameters. We can see the additional five bands on their own separate page. We can adjust any of these uh, EQ bands several different ways. Uh, we can certainly click on it here in the graph and move the cursor and as you see when we move the cursor on the graph it also changes down uh, here in the parameters. If I change it here in the parameters, it changes on the graph. If I use the keyboard shortcuts, they change on the graph and on the parameter display at the bottom. This all happens in real time, meaning that you can hear the adjustments as you're making them. I can also selectively mute or unmute any channel I want so that I can listen to all of the channels together. I could selectively mute the surrounds. Uh, maybe I want to mute the center channel and just listen to left and right. It's a very easy way to listen to different channels while playing different uh, test tones, music, movies, uh, whatever you might want to play through them. It's a great way to adjust your uh, equalizer by ear.